to um, to talk tonight, continue continuing to speak about necessary qualities to be an apostolic Christian. Lesson six, and there's one more I'd like to speak about next week. And I want to I, I, this week I'm combining two. Next week uh, I don't want to combine two. It'll just be I want to speak about relationship. It's absolutely necessary in that, to be an apostolic. Christian. I want to talk about purpose and vision tonight. And I believe that God's going to help us. Would you ask God to just heal Sister Patty Jewison right now? She's really having a tough time. Ask the Lord to help Sister Patty Jewison, okay? In, in the name of the Lord, Jesus, I believe you, Lord, that you're a healer, Lord. I believe you to, to heal Sister Patty Jewison. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you to heal her body right this moment. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about purpose, making a difference in my world. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I think that everybody would raise their hand that there's a desire in you to make a difference in your world. Really, to, to make a difference for Jesus. After all, he's done for us that we just will say, Lord, I just, I just love to be able to spread your name and some, however you want me to, to spread that and as, as pastor, I don't stand lightly behind this pulpit in, in the fact that uh, I consider it a light thing is what I'm meaning, and be, but uh, I pray to God that I can be a blessing to somebody today, and uh, I, really, I really do. I want, I want God to, to bless you, and I'll try to stick as close as I can to my notes due to the fact that at my age, I need to. I can I can go down a lot of rabbit trails. I'm not kidding you. And we'll never get done tonight. But uh, I'm not known to be long-winded, and I don't very often backslide from that. But it's possible for a message to be sent and it received in the wrong way. Anybody ever had that happen? A message to be sent and it's received the wrong way. It can be it can be it interpreted different, or it can be scrambled, or and I believe that the enemy of our soul tries to keep us from our purpose. And though, uh, though that God is with us, we know the enemy fights us. And through discouragement, through circumstances, through distractions, or sometimes scrambling the message that we receive from God, trying to interrupt and to think that, or to make us think that we are of no use, and that the purpose of God really does not matter. But uh, I want to continue to speak against staleness, and I want to speak freshness. We need, we need fresh faith. We need fresh oil. We need a fresh experience with God continually. I'm not talking about just a Sunday going to meet in Christianity. I'm talking about seven days a week, 24-7. The purpose of the Lord is wonderful, and the purpose of the church is wonderful. And then there's purpose in our life individually. We are, we make up God's church and we're individuals and the enemy continuously tries to take you away from your purpose. Continually. Didn't Paul, Paul say that, that uh, without we're fightings, within we're fears. And that word that you so capably expound on Brother Friesen, nevertheless, it's uh, words in there, isn't it? In that verse of, of scripture. I'm glad that there's some neverthelesses around. Uh, looking at the the Corinthian church, it um, there was carnality that was widespread in the Corinthian church. They seem to have forgotten the true purpose of the church is to exalt Jesus, and they for, they kind of forgot that. It uh, it appears that they allowed the Lord's Supper to become a time of feasting and they became tolerant of immorality in the church and moreover several factions had formed within the church this is all in the fact that Paul said you come behind no gift <laughs> I mean there were there's unity had basically disappeared from the church and Paul rebuked them for following their favorite preachers and and from the first letter to the Corinthian church, we gather that some would listen to nobody else but Peter. And there are some that would listen to nobody else but Paul. 
And there were some that, that uh, were of Apollos and others had favorites that they, that they listened to and some were not willing, they were, they were not willing to listen to anybody. They were just going to follow Christ. And they weren't listening to anybody. And so Paul uh, spoke to them in the midst of that carnality. The Lord was still moving upon them mightily. When you look at the seven churches in the book of Revelation, and they, they, they start out with Ephesus, I think, and then they, they, it ends with what, Laodicea? In the, in the latter part of chapter 3. And you'll find from reading these, these stories of the churches, what a mess a church can get into. A church can really get in a mess. Now, I'm not saying that from the, believing that you folks are all in a real big mess. But uh, I just want to say this. I'm glad I can say this right in the middle of tremendous revival that's happening right this moment. really is it's 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 happening there's god's the you can there's such an expectation in the air what god is going to do there really is but jesus it, even though those churches were messed up as we read in Re, in revelation 2 and and chapter 3 uh chapter 2 chapter 3 jesus still called them churches and he basically told the pastor you better do something about it because i'm getting ready to take my presence right out of the middle of that. Six out of seven of them. And the, the church is not, in call, is not called to be an enforcer, but the church is called to be an outpost of grace. And we must never forget our purpose. The purpose of the church is to represent the Lord and the Lord's kingdom wherever we are. I pray, if I don't daily, I intend to, but I... I, in most days, anyway, I'll say, because I don't know for sure if it's every day, but I pray, Lord, let me be a blessing today to somebody. Let me follow in your purpose. Lead me, God, wherever I might go today. Our embassy is our community, our town, or our city, and the Bible does call us ambassadors, and we represent Jesus Christ, and we minister to Jesus Christ, and we bring people to him. We bring people to that refuge that there is in Jesus Christ. And just as uh, 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 an executive represents uh, the corporation that he or company that he or she involved is, represents, uh, they represent that, that company, so we should represent the Lord as Christians. How many is going to say amen to that? 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. I know you might, you might be getting sick of me reading this, but... I'm doing it again, and I don't really care if you get sick of it. I'm reading it anyway. And all things are of God, and has, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And here it is. He's given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Wow. We're at work. That's, that's our job to say, hey, I want to I wanna get you reconciled to God. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to un, unto us the word of reconciliation. Where's that word? What's that word? Does that mean we read the Bible to people? No, that means that we speak to them right out of our mouth. The word of reconciliation. I can tell you how to be reconciled to Jesus Christ. Now then... We are ambassadors for Christ. So God is beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. That means God uses you. God still manifests himself in flesh. God still uses flesh. God still uses people. How many is aware of, of that? He has no hands or feet but ours. He has no voice but our voice. So we should share the good news with everyone that's under the sphere of our influence. When are the people um, in our church, our local church, meet people, we should be uh, personable and energetic, and we should portray the image of the church. There's no one that's really looking for someone depressed. No, I think someone's favorite song is, some people's favorite song is, I'm depressed every day that I live, I am, I'm depressed. 
instead of I'm blessed. But anyway, when, when a person needs assistance and uh, really needs God, let them meet a, a real Christian, a person that's thankful for what God has done in their life. Uh, hallelujah. The early church was passionate and zealous and apostolic and without doubt it's a desire of God for the church today to possess that same zeal and passion. The truth of the book of Acts when combined with that same fire that possessed the early church has a potential to affect uh, with the same with the, uh, to, to affect people in this society. People need God, period. People need God. Jesus is not one of the answer. He's the only answer. He still is the answer. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the Lord's purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost. And that must be the purpose uh, of the church today, to reach the lost of this day. The Lord had a definite plan in mind. And uh, he, he charted the plan. He charted the course. And disciples were what? They, they were followers of Jesus. And they followed the plan that Jesus portrayed. And, and, and things did not happen, ran, does not happen randomly in the life of a Christian. I believe that our lives have purpose. I believe in the purpose of God. Wow. When are we going to understand that God's ways are higher than ours? It doesn't make one lick of sense uh, that God would send people through the Red Sea. But he did. Did he not? He did. Matter of fact, scientists and people, archaeologists and all that kind of stuff, they, you know, they're even agreeing with that. That, Yeah, we found it. They found the place where they, they found the chariots. They found the wheels. They found the place where they went across in the Red Sea. And, and uh, it's made a lot of people believers just from, from that. But there are distinct talents and abilities that we all have and can, can contribute to the church. There are some people that have musical ability. And um, obviously, uh, others possess the ability to teach. And um, some are called to a pulpit ministry. And there's various building skills and physical skills. And I know one thing for sure. I do not have them. I don't have building skills. I do not have any type of skill in that area. I know how to push a wheelbarrow. And I know how to go into town and get things. And I know how to get to go to Tim Hortons and get coffees. And that's all. Well, I, not just coffees. I have to have that Earl Grey tea for Brother Eckerman too. But anyway, I have to please everybody, you know. Anyway, we've got a lot of, uh, I believe that we need to use every ability that we have, whatever it might be for the Lord, for, for God and his work. It shouldn't be. My ministry, you shouldn't refer to it. We should refer to it as our ministry. It's our ministry. It's the work of God. We need to know what our ministry is. And part of the body, the, the, uh, the ministry of the body of Christ is to disciple believers to grow in God. Thank you, Jesus. What a great satisfaction that you say, I can look back a year ago and know that I've grown in the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Good to be able to say that. And may it not be that you would say, I look back a year ago and realize I regressed a whole lot. Now you better get back on track. Let's move on. Jude 3, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. So it says common salvation and it says, the faith was once delivered unto the saints. Notice that. Common salvation, the faith. So there's many distractions to keep us from our purpose and our destiny, but we need to, we need to work in the realm of the supernatural. 
No matter how you feel in the morning, that does not affect God at all. No matter how you feel, that does not determine God's ability. No matter how you feel, you got to remember, the enemy's trying to distract you from God's purpose, and he doesn't like it. He doesn't, he, he doesn't say, okay, I'll just move over, and Lord, and let you have your way. Bless them really good. No, not a chance. Bring them down, tear them up. If the enemy could, he'd, he'd destroy all of us. You've got to understand that. If the enemy really could do it, he would destroy all of us, not today, but a long time ago. But you know what? The Lord won't let him. Trevor Milton's not here. He had a big emergency that came up. But I end up quoting him all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing. <laughs> really? He was the one to come up with no matter, no matter what, the, if, if God is not on your mind all the time, you're on his mind all the time. Hallelujah. That is absolutely so awesome. It really is. That's awesome. The enemy would like to keep us from our purpose, but we're going to walk in the supernatural. As Paul said to the Corinthians um, in chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech, my preaching, preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul, the, the most learned man that I can see in the New Testament was the Apostle Paul. Yet he said, I don't, I'm not dependent on my own abilities. I've come weakness and I'm come trembling. And I'm not coming with enticing words of, of wisdom, uh, but uh, I don't want your faith to stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Thank God. Thank God. I believe in the supernatural working power of God, and I believe uh, no matter how I feel tomorrow morning, that doesn't change God a bit. If I feel like uh, it's a wonderful day, or if I feel like uh, that uh, I just swallowed a worm and I'd like to crawl in a hole and die, what, uh, no matter how I feel tomorrow morning, uh, the Lord does not change. Uh, he is still on the throne, and he's still able to help me. I may believe that. <laughs> Praise God. We're to seek and to save that which is lost. We're to work in the anointing of God, preach the gospel, heal the brokenhearted. We sung about it. And we need to preach deliverance to, and we need to believe God, that God's taken the spiritual scales of blindness from those that are spiritually blind and bring to, to liberty those that are bruised. Hallelujah. We have that ministry of reconciliation, and we shouldn't take that lightly. We have the word of reconciliation as ambassadors, and we represent Jesus Christ and bring hope to a world that desperately needs hope. And it's going to continue to happen all the time. It really is. Here's the purpose of the Lord. Matthew 18, verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. That's the purpose of God. That's why Jesus Christ said, that's why he came, to save that which was lost. His people are not going to believe like the world, and they're not going to look like the world, and think like the world, and live like the world, or give like the world. He wants us to be a peculiar people. Thank you, Lord. His treasure. In, uh, that's why he states in Exodus 19.5. Now look at this. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Peculiar, peculiar to the world, but a treasure to God. You really are. Now let's switch and talk about vision for just a few minutes. We need purpose and we need vision. And I picked the two, these two because I believe that they are tied together. In 1 Corinthians 16, 9, it says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. It says there are many adversaries. One door I see, but many adversaries. Wow, anybody ever feel like that might be the case when your circumstances? 
So it's necessary to have vision, or what are you seeing? Are you seeing the open door, or are you just watching the adversaries? What are you seeing? Don't forget who's in charge. Yeah. Live like Jesus is coming today for sure. If you know for sure, yeah, I know for sure Jesus is coming today. And I know for sure Jesus is coming tomorrow. No, I'm going to live like that. And I know for sure Jesus is coming the next day. He's going to come one of these days. He is. So we have a, but we continue to occupy. We have a plan. We continue to occupy, but we can plan for Brother Reynolds to come Sunday night. But one day, the Lord's going to interrupt all of our plans. Say, bring it on. The last words of the church to the, to the Lord in the Bible is, is, even so come, Lord Jesus. My. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Who was it, Brother? Uh, come on. Brother... Who's the guy that was here, Brother Josh's friend? Beardsley, yeah. That's the guy that, he's the one that said, God saw the Israel in me. Wasn't he? Boy, I like that. That's powerful. In other words, he saw not what I was, he saw what I could be. So what do, what do you see? This is how God moves. God moves by how we used to be. He moves like that. He brought light out of darkness, not darkness out of light. You notice that? He brought light out of darkness. Yes, he did. The darkest time is when you can feel God the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see? Do you see the author and finisher of your faith? What God starts, God's not going to give up on. What God starts, God's going to finish. In Samaria, they saw the famine. They saw the eating of children even. They saw a future of slowly starving to death. But the prophet saw plenty. He saw the plenty because he saw it through eyes of faith. Hallelujah. 24 hours later, after a woman was arguing over about who's eating whose kid and all that kind of stuff, uh, yeah, pretty gross stuff. See, 24 hours from then, there was plenty in the land of Samaria. That's how God can turn it around in your life. That's how God can move on your situation that you're in right now. Ooh. When they stood at the Red Sea, they saw slavery. They saw the end. Israel saw defeat. They saw they saw the Egyptians coming after them and knew they were going to feel the rough hands of the soldiers upon them when as they were drugged back into slavery in the land of Egypt. But God saw a way where there was no way. God was making a way where there was no way. God had different plans than they had. I'm telling you that what you need to, you need to, want, you need to look at what God's doing. I'm talking about the church needing vision. God just wanted them to believe him. God is saying, I don't want you looking at the adversaries. Uh, it's the open door that I want you looking at. Uh, you just look at the open door uh, and I'll take care of the adversaries. Uh, you just keep on walking through the open door uh, and you just keep believing me. Whoa. Hallelujah. Praise him just for a minute before I go crazy here. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thought this scripture is kind of neat. In, in uh, Zechariah 8, verse 6, says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts. Wow. So what's the Lord saying here? If it's marvelous in your sight, it'll be marvelous in God's sight. You believe in miracles, God's going to back it up. You step out by faith, uh, God's not going to leave you hanging. Hallelujah. God is asking you to step up by faith and watching the miraculous happen. Uh, how many times uh, have you spoken by faith and God honored it? How many times? Brother Milton, I know that, that you like this, but you can, you can criticize Peter for sinking when he looked at the waves, but he did walk with, on the water with Jesus back to the boat, right? <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, and that's never been duplicated since. Yes, he did. With God, all things are possible. I got thinking about that today. With man, it's impossible. But Jesus said, not with God. With God, all things are possible. He just wants someone to believe him. You know, uh, the, tw uh, the, the 12 spies were chosen by Moses, and they went out not to see whether or not that they could win the victory, that they could win the battle, but uh, they went out to see the land. And what they saw was, import was important. What the 12 spies saw was important. What 10 spies saw determined the decision that they made, and they wandered 40 years, uh, and the evil report was their demise. Uh, but what the two saw determined their destiny. Hallelujah. And Joshua and Caleb walked in the land of promise and, gave, and had the inheritance for themselves. Hallelujah. Sister Shannon, you can tell your husband, I'm quoting him again. In preacher talk, he said this. He said, I don't want to wait 40 years for the promise. He said, I'll take the 11 days. Same promise. Now that'll, work, that'll preach. Or you can have the 11 days or you can have the 40 years. My, oh, my. Ah, he said, I'll take the 11 days. Praise God. Jesus looked on the people and the multitude and he saw them as sheep having no shepherd. Mark 6 and 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people moved with compassion toward them because they were sheep not having a shepherd and began to teach them many things. Brother, ever, anybody ever hear Brother Merle Ewing sing the song, He Saw Me? Ever hear that? Anybody ever hear that? I love that. Though. He can sing it like, uh, I know he's gone on to be with the Lord, but if you ever get a chance, all, it'll do you good to, to check it out on the Internet. You can find it. It's easy. Um, anyway, I don't need to tell you what, what to do in that area. You can tell me what to do. That's for sure. He saw me. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that the Lord saw us? So, vision's so important. What do you see? Looking through eyes of faith. And not only looking through eyes of faith, but looking through eyes of compassion. So, it's not as how you look. That means how you appear. But how you look as how you see. Not how you look on others, but how you see others. Not how you look on others, but how you, how you see others. Hebrews 6.18 that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, that we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Notice what that says. Hope set before us. Now keep this in mind. Hope set before us. Now here's the next one. Hebrews 12, 1. The last part of that says, the race that is set before us. Hope set before us. Race set before us. And then looking unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2. Uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, so joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, set down the right hand of the throne of God. So the joy, joy was set before Jesus, and he endured. There are some things that you just must endure. I mean, to fulfill the will of God, you've got to endure it. What does that mean? Well, I guess that simply means hanging in there and putting up with it. I don't know what it is. What does the word endure mean? It just means, it just means uh, long haul, right? Yeah, trust, long haul faith, endure. He that endured until the end, the same shall be. What's it say? Saved. That must be. That's very important. 
Revelation 3, 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Set before us an open door. No man can shut it. Hallelujah. So what do you see that is set before you? Remember Brother G.A. Mangan, he used to say, I'm not moving anywhere. I'm not going right and I'm looking, not going left. I'm not looking to the right and I'm not looking to the left. I'm just looking right straight ahead. <laughs> That's what, he, that's what he used to say. And I'm just going to keep on going. And he did. Look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, that's who we're following. Don't you believe that the leader is providing the way? We're following Jesus Christ. So do you see a crowd or do you see soul? Let me, souls. Let me talk about vision just a little bit more. Do you see a dirty person or do you see a lost soul? Do you hear a filthy mouth or do you hear the potential that person can be speaking in other tongues? Do you see an opportunity when one comes? Do you see an opportunity? If you need to pray something, pray this. Pray, God, let me see that opportunity and let me know that it is an opportunity that you want me to do this or that, whatever you're wanting me to do. John 4, 35, say not ye, there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. That means absolutely now, right now. Revelation 3.21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I am also over, even as I also overcame and was set down with my father in his throne. Or in other words, what's Jesus saying? Just like I overcame, you can overcome. Just like I overcame. He overcame, he endured, you can overcome, you can endure. Praise God. John 16, 33. Aren't you glad that Jesus' whole life was that of an overcomer? John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. My, oh, my. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Noah stepped off the ark, and I'm soon going to be finished. Noah stepped off the ark, and there was life was destroyed. Can you imagine what that was like? He stepped off the ark, bloated, dead bodies of people that would not listen. Oh, he stepped off the ark. But he overcame the atmosphere, and he built an altar. That's what he did. What an atmosphere that Noah stepped into when he left the ark. Every living thing that was not in the ark died off. He viewed the carnage as he stepped off the ark. Was he tempted to curse God or was he tempted to blame God? And if you get in the blame game, you're going to miss out on the purpose of God. Noah built an altar to the knowledge of to acknowledge God's sovereignty. God, you have the right to do anything that you want to do. Instead of blaming God, he said he was his attitude was this. God, you have the right to do anything you want to do. And I'm building an altar to show my show that you are sovereign over me. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries. What do you see? Do you see the adversaries or you just see the open door? Right in the Antichrist atmosphere. We're living in it and I'm going to talk about it. Not right now, but I'm telling you Revelation 13 is going to happen. Whether you like it or whether you don't. I don't care if it, what uh, guy comes along. Uh, Pierre Polyev is not going to be the savior of the world. No, he's not. And I voted for him. I mean, already I did. I, he's about the best thing among the worst. But, but uh, this world's going down. And there is an Antichrist system that is in place in this world. Like it or lump it, it really is. It is for sure. But right in the middle of this Antichrist system, the people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. 
Hallelujah. And the meaning of exploits means a deed marked by heroism and daring. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Paul obeyed. He was baptized. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And when God removed the scales from his eyes, he saw the lost. The one who had went through the world breathing out threatenings and slaughter against Christ and against his church now commenced his incredible journeys throughout the world to find lost souls who he could win for Jesus Christ. My God. Hallelujah. We must see how great our God is and see how great that God is in us. I preached on the second, revel, uh, second greatest revelation and it is this, and that is the mighty God in us. It's easy to preach the first one, the mighty God in Christ. Uh, I can preach that, uh, but it's harder for people to believe this one, the mighty God in us, because we see the carnality and the flesh and we see that uh, in me is no good thing. Paul said, that in me is no good thing, but yet he went on three missionary journeys and reached the whole then known world. Yeah, that didn't stop him. He said, uh, I die daily. I, I'm, I must keep it under my flesh, uh, but I tell you what, he, he reached the whole world. Uh, he, he said, I don't care what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Uh, thank you, Jesus. And I wonder if there's people that are here in this church building right now uh, that a purpose within your heart. I don't know what you're doing, sir. I don't know what you're doing, ma'am, but I know what I'm doing. Uh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to walk with him with everything within me. Uh, I'm going to follow the purpose of God. Uh, I'm going to see what Jesus wants me to see. I don't want to believe what Jesus wants me to believe. Please stand with me right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we are going to pray together in just a, just a moment. We're going to gather, but I think that we need to just thrust one hand into the air at least uh, and let us give some honor and glory and praise under the name that's above all names. Jesus, uh, there is none like you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. There is none like you, O oh Lord. Your blessings fill this building right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let your... Oh, yes, Lord. Let the windows of heaven continue to be opened. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. It's above all names, Jesus. I exalt you, O oh Lord, my God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I sense the nearness of the Lord. I sense the nearness of the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's not right out there, way out there somewhere where I've got to reach out there and find him somewhere. He's just right here. He's right. He's here right now. The Lord is. Praise God. Why don't you just step out of your seat and let's gather it somewhere. Thank you, Lord. Help me just give praise and glory unto the Lord. Let the Lord renew himself in us. Let God renew himself in us right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let God renew himself in us. Let God renew himself in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I desire you, O oh Lord, my God. I desire you, O oh Lord, my God. That's it. Come on, just allow the Lord to renew himself in you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I 